Jerome Powell vowed to raise rates to fight inflation until the job is done. He says he is strongly committed to fighting inflation. There's one stock that I think really no matter what happens with the Fed, with CPI, I think it will still do well. Now, I'm not saying that it won't fall down when we get CPI, if CPI comes in higher than expected, but I think it will continue to grow. And that's why it's my number one holding. I want to talk to you about that today. Also talk to you about a crypto that can also overcome the Fed raising rates. Now, they say don't fight the Fed, and that's true for the most part, but this is also a good time to be accumulating. This is a good time whenever there's some kind of recession or fears of a massive downturn or we have seen a downturn, that's typically a good time to be at least dollar cost averaging. That's what I'm doing. If you guys want, there is a link to Moomoo underneath the video. I would highly suggest it. I think you should definitely try that link out. Try out the platform. They'll give you 10 free stocks when you deposit $100 and they're worth up to $2,000. So definitely check that out underneath the video. Now, Fed Jerome Powell said just a few days ago that they continued to try to increase rates to fight inflation until the job is done. He's not trying to play any political games. He's not trying to, you know, help the Democrats like a lot of people think. Now, I think the fact is we are going to see inflation come down because we had seen inflation right around September, October last year jump up pretty drastically. So that's going to fall off over the 12 month. So we're going to see a decrease in inflation that's pretty pretty substantial here in a few days. And right now, we have seen the federal funds rate go up pr pretty substantially. I mean, it's still not as high as it has been in the past, but 25 basis points, 50, 75, 75. And when that's happened, uh, we still expect to see another 75 basis points. Now, there's about 91% chance uh, according to the Fed rate monitor tool, that we are going to see 75 basis points. So the market's already priced this in, right? It's not like they're expecting 25 basis points and that's why the market's pumping. They are reaching kind of a certainty that we are going to see 75 basis points. So unless we saw 100 or something like that, the fact is that the market should take this as a good sign when they just announce 75 basis points. Now, of course, whenever that happens, whenever they announce, there's kind of a lot of volatility right around then. Uh, and it takes a while to see where the market's actually going to go after. But 75 basis points is pretty much locked in. After that, though, they think 50. Then after that, they think 25. So we have to be careful because as the end of the year gets closer, we are expecting a little bit more of a dovish policy. Now, I still think that there is one stock that's going to do well and has been doing well since they started raising rates. While a lot of other stocks are down 20, 30, 50, 90%, since March of this year, one stock, my top holding, Tesla, has actually done really well. And we'll get to the crypto here in a second as well. But if you look back at March of this year, we had seen Tesla around 290, 260. Uh, and after they announced the rate hike, we're, we're still actually up about 3%. As we've risen rates or uh, rose rates several times in here, we continue to go sideways or go up. Now, Tesla's at $300. What I'm doing right now is actually kind of a hybrid strategy. So I've done a full video on this, but I have about 80% of my shares that I'm just holding. I'm just holding and waiting for the long term. I keep on buying every single week, but I am selling covered calls on about 20% of my portfolio. Now, if you don't know what covered calls are, I will put a video right up here so that or right up here so that you can watch a longer explanation for that. But it's a great way to make passive income. And what I did this week was I actually bought to close my covered call. Tesla was around 270 with a couple days left before uh, before the options expiration. So I bought to close it. I paid maybe about 10% the cost of the uh, or 20% the cost of the options contract just to get it all done because we had seen so many red days in a row. I closed it and then we started pumping back up. Now I am putting that in the Patreon as well. There's a link to Patreon underneath the video if you want. I've made about $400 a week over the last three weeks doing that. And I plan on doing that going forward. Now I'm not doing that right now. I'm not selling on any covered calls this week because CPI, I think it's going to be big. And I, I don't want to I don't want to sell that kind of volatility. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that we are going to stay sideways. I actually am 
an optimist at heart. So I think CPI is going to come in lower, especially with a lot of the gas prices coming in lower and energy costs going lower. So I am not trying to make a big bet because I think there could be a substantial pump this week. Now, I'm not saying to go out and buy a ton of stocks or anything like that this week uh, because of this, but I am an optimist and I see numbers coming in. I am pretty certain or I am uh, I'm betting the, that we will see CPI come down pretty drastically. Now, another reason Tesla is going to do well is just because of the business that they're in. EVs are getting adopted everywhere. They're growing out uh, stations, which is most people's main concern that they won't be able to charge. So there are going to be a lot more stations coming in. They also are growing their production pretty substantially. Even just last month, we had had a big problem in China with shutdowns, and now they tripled, essentially tripled uh, the amount of vehicles delivered or sold uh, from last month. So that is awesome. Uh, we are able to continue to get back on track in China, uh, ramping up production as well, ramping up production in a lot of the other factories, and they are planning on opening another factory or announcing another factory this year. They're also looking at getting into mining so that way there isn't as much of a concern about the raw materials. They also are planning on unveiling their autopilot or their uh, full self-driving, I should say, by the end of the year to everyone, their new version. So I think this is going to be very, very beneficial. I think the fact that they can give you back your time with uh, full self-driving, I think they're much further along than any other company, and they're actually able to learn a lot of these other companies. If you put them down on a track that they've already measured out, they can do well, but if you put them in a new situation, they don't know how to do anything, essentially. So I think giving Tesla owners back their time and letting them focus on something else, even just not paying attention as much to the road as they would if they were just driving it themselves, I think that's probably the biggest innovation towards, again, giving people back their time and uh, giving something that you really can't get any more of. You can't pay for more time for the most part. I mean, you can hire a maid or something like that, but you can't pay for that. You can't pay for more time on this earth. So being able to claim some of that back, I think is gonna be huge and people are gonna be willing to pay a lot for it when it's very efficient. So that's going to be awesome uh, over the next year or two uh, if they can get that really mainstream. And that's going to be a huge revenue driver and a huge profit driver for them because that is very, 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 very high profit. Their margins are already better than everyone in the business. They're going to start probably lowering the cost of their vehicles over the coming years once they keep on ramping up production. And that will even bring them more mainstream than they are now. So I could go on forever about Tesla, but I think Tesla is going to continue to do well. Now, I'm not saying to go out and put all your money in Tesla. A lot of people say that's overvalued, but when you look at the growth compared to the cost, I think it makes sense. And they're only about, they say one-tenth, actually less than one-tenth of where they're going to be in terms of vehicles sold uh, per year. And that's by 2030. They're hoping for 20 million cars sold a year. Some people don't think it can be done. I personally think they can hit that. So they're one-tenth of the revenue, one-tenth of the net income that they're going to be years from now. And that's without even getting into all the other parts of their business uh, that we didn't even talk about, like energy and uh, robotics. And then Bitcoin. I think you have to realize Bitcoin is super volatile, right? Especially with the market. When we are in a fiscally uh, conservative or a, let's say more, more hawkish environment, Bitcoin does not do well, right? That's what we found out recently. And the whole market is have been going down pretty much, uh, the crypto market specifically, substantially over the last six months. We had this little rally up to 50,000 and then back down. Now, I think we could definitely fall further from here. A lot of people are calling for 10, 11, 12K based on what we've seen in the past. I like to dollar cost average at this point. It's still historically low. When you look at it compared to the 200 week moving average, we're $2,000 below it. Now, I liked it more at 19,000 a couple days ago. I was buying then, uh, but I will continue to buy. Now, one big event that's happening, obviously, this coming week is actually the ETH merge. And then we have Cardano hard fork. There are still going to be events in the meantime and good news uh, and a lot of adoption because a lot of big companies are now starting to uh, allow their investors to start buying Bitcoin, like Fidelity. I think they just announced that they're going to allow their investors to start buying in the next month or so. It might be even faster than that. But if we're talking about the biggest event here in the next year and a half, it's got to be the Bitcoin halving. 
that is by far gonna be the most important event to watch. And I think people will start buying ahead of that. That's typically when we've seen new cycles uh, start to begin and it doesn't always pump right when the having happens, but that is, I think, the most important thing to watch. So pay attention to that. If you are trying to accumulate some amount of Bitcoin, I would suggest trying to get some before that event. And I don't think, even if the Fed is being hawkish at that point, I don't think they can really pull down the price of Bitcoin because so many people are going to want to buy ahead of that and during that and slightly after that, that I think we will see a massive pump. It's just a question of how much Bitcoin can you really accumulate and be comfortable with because you don't want your whole portfolio to be one kind of asset, especially a risky asset. Uh, you don't want to do that for the most part, unless you are very well educated and are comfortable with that kind of risk profile. But personally, I have my largest bags in Bitcoin and Tesla above any other security. Those are my biggest bags. Again, check out the link to Moomoo underneath the video to get those free stocks and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.